Hey, Boomhauer. How was Houston? Do anything, uh, interesting? No, you know, man, it's, uh, you know, usual old meetings, you know, and stuff, conferences, stuff like, you know, man, you know. Liar! Show him, Hank. An official Houston Texans bobblehead. If you're going to sneak around behind the Dallas Cowboys' backs, you better not ask a Cowboy fan to get your mail. You went to that training camp, didn't you? You make me sick. Hmm? Dang it, Boomhauer, just because the Cowboys have a bad season or two, or five, doesn't give you the right to abandon them. Right, guys? Although, I guess if we root for the Texans, it doesn't mean we'd have to stop rooting for the Cowboys. Well, they are in different conferences. So it'd only be a problem if they played in the Super Bowl. An all-Texas Super Bowl. His will be done. Peggy, where's that list of ATMs in Houston? Me and the guys are going to watch the Texans training camp this weekend. This weekend? Hike, we have reservations at That's Amore Saturday night. I, I told you about this. I booked the table in the kitchen. The chef's table? You got in? Oh, yeah, I sort of remember you mentioning that. Hike, it took me two months to get that table. I promoted an illiterate student to the ninth grade just because his father delivers meat to That's Amore. Sure, let's have dinner in a restaurant's kitchen. Maybe we can have dessert in the restroom. All right, Hank, you're not understanding me. When I made plans, I checked with you first. But you, you just go off and make whatever plans you want without even consulting me. Fine, I'll consult you on everything. Peggy, I'm going to go get a glass of water. Oh, wait, Peggy, I'm walking to the refrigerator first. Oh, maybe I should just take Bobby. Bobby, I'm not taking you. I was just trying to get back at your father. Oh. Uh, Peggy, I've been thinking about what you were saying, and I realized you were right to be mad at me. And I want to make it up to you, so, uh, ta-da. Guess who's coming to Houston with us? And don't worry, I cleared it with the guys. You're riding shotgun, and we don't have to share a room with Bill. Oh, so you've decided I'm going to Houston this weekend, and what team I'm going to root for. Have you written a cheer for me too, Hank? Uh, no. I cannot believe you. I am not one of your propane tanks you can just order around who will obey your every whim. Bobby, it's your lucky day. Your father has a new shirt for you. Really? No. Peggy won't let me go to Houston. Are you two having problems? Irreconcilable differences, maybe? As the only happily married man out here, may I suggest marriage counseling with Dr. Tim Rast? Tim Rast will make your marriage last. I came up with that slogan during one of our sessions while Nancy was jabbering about something. You're going to couples therapy? Dang it, Dale, how could you? Oh, he's great, Hank, a real man's man. No matter what, he always takes my side. He knows who signs Nancy's name on his checks. Huh, so all I have to do is show up and he'll tell Peggy I'm right and she's wrong. Yeah, huh? Even when I say something I know is crazy, he nods. Huh. Well, I guess as long as he's just there to tell Peggy she's wrong, I can't see the harm. Uh, Peggy, I don't really know how to say this, and yet there's no greeting card for it either. What? Well, uh, I think we should see a professional relationship person. What? You mean a marriage counselor? Like the one Dale and Nancy use. Dr. Tim Rast. Yes, him. Please, Peggy, I just need somewhere safe to go and uh, let it all hang out. Oh, Hank, don't worry. I'll handle everything. I'll call tomorrow to make an appointment. I already did. Friday at 4.30. Huh. So you made an appointment without consulting me. Well, at least we know the first thing we'll discuss. Even his elbows are nicotine stained. He refuses to acknowledge he's bald... And he sobs uncontrollably after sex. Well, crying can be a healthy release. Thank you, doctor. Say, it's that time again. But before you go, I want to draw something for y'all to take home. This here is a treasure map. Uh. Every time you catch yourself thinking the key to happiness is out there somewhere, Nancy, I want you to look at this map, because it'll lead you to a treasure that'll bring the both of you untold riches for the rest of your lives. Gimme! Dr. Rass really is very good. Now, I have solved the family's emotional crises up to now, so I hope you do not mind if I take my own notes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. So here's the deal, Coach. She wants to go to a restaurant and eat in the kitchen. I know, I don't get it either. 
and I want to go see the Texans train. I look forward to your ruling. This is not just about going to see the Texans. It is about the Chinese cooking class we never took, the matching outfits we never wore. Do you realize we have no scented soaps anywhere in the house? Hank is always acting like the boss. He won't even let me pay the phone bill because he doesn't like the way I make sevens. Hank, I want you to go see the Texans and forget all about Peggy. See? Sounds pretty dang selfish when you hear it out loud. Okay, let's do magic wand. What's going on here? It's a relationship game, Hank. I got it from Goldie Hawn's life coach at a conference in Reno. Oh, God, I've been misinformed. I need to get out of here. Sit down, Hank. This was your idea. I think you'll like magic wand, Hank. Let's play. Now you have a magic wand. What's one thing you would like to change about your partner? Well, call me crazy, but I wouldn't change anything. Well, that's not the right answer. Give me the wand. I'll do it right. Sounds like you two have an issue with control. What I like to do is something I call time machine therapy, or TMT. I am going to kill Dale. What I want you two to do is picture yourselves in the future. You two are retired, no work, no kids. Quick, where do you picture yourself? We already have that figured out. We're going to buy his and hers motorcycles and see America, excluding California. Mm Mm-hmm. Tell me more. What more is there? Freedom of the open road and such? All the maintenance a guy could ask for? Collecting spoons from every state capital? Meeting colorful characters like truck stop waitresses and corrupt local sheriffs? We have set up a direct deposit savings account and are just over halfway to our goal. More if our son Bobby doesn't go to college. I'm going to write you to a prescription I think is going to help you with your problem. One motorcycle? Doctor, if you'll check your notes, we only have half the money saved. Mm Mm-hmm. Here it is, right here. But half the money will still buy you one motorcycle, and that would give you something to share together as equal partners. Of course, if you don't want a motorcycle, there's other things you could spend that money on, like more counseling. It is now. Hit it, Daddy! believe you guys bought a motorcycle. Evil Knievel had a Harley, and a cape, and a jeweled walking stick. It was a cane, and it was because he had a crushed pelvis. And a cape! Hmm, I'm having trouble making this out through my own spit. What kind of idiot uses delible ink to draw a treasure map? This looks about right. Start digging, Bill. Can I take the blindfold off? I don't want any of your treasure. I just enjoy the time we spend together. Me too. That's why I didn't gag you. No, Bill. I promised I'll wipe my head first. No. We ride in five, Big H. I just have to leather up. Boy, we made the right move. I tell you what, we didn't need therapy. We needed a motorcycle. Whenever we go to the hardware store, she gets to give me a 20-minute hug, and I get to go to the hardware store. God, that shorty hummer looks hot on you. (laughs) Well, I'll keep it on. Kiss me as hard as you want. Your stuff's cleared up, right? Wow, look at those two, Hank. Real bikers. We're going to need some real biker accessories if we're going to fit in with this crowd. Check out this wallet. That's so it doesn't fall out of your pants during a rumble. Could you add this to our wedding registry? I can't remember if it's under my name, Pepperoni Sue, or the groom's, Lumpy. Well, that explains why you two are acting like a couple of about-to-be newlyweds. Congratulations! Thanks. You're only off by ten years. We're doing a recommitment ceremony. First time we got married, all I got was a pair of assless pants and a bottle of tequila. That bottle and them pants got us through five states in three days. Oh, what a honeymoon. Yeah, this country of ours looks pretty darn good with your boots up in the breeze. You said it, brother. And now me and the old lady are fixing to head up to South Dakota for the nuptials. Yep, biker week in Sturgis. Just like the first time around. Yeah, tradition's real important to Lumpy and me. That's why we're going to spend our wedding night under the same foosball table in the same bars last time. Oh, hey, have you guys ever been to Sturgis? 
Ah, oh, it's a party. 800,000 bikers and Robbie Knievel's jumping 13 dump trucks in the middle of a Styx concert. Yeah, it's a solid week of free music, dancing, and pickle-licking contests. You should come. Well, it does sound like it offers a lot of fun couples activities. We have been talking about doing a longer ride. Yeah, live to ride, ride to live. Pepperoni Sue, give them an invitation to our reception. If you feel like getting us something, we're also registered at the liquor store. Hmm. Well, dude, if we're going to be riding to Sturgis, we will need some sunblock. I'm off to the store. Good thinking, motorcycle mama. I may never sleep again. Driving this Harley was amazing. If I have bugs in my teeth, it is because I could not stop smiling. I should probably floss. I'd ask you to start it up, but it'd wake up Bobby. Ah, who cares? He gets enough sleep. Move! It's mine! <laughs> what is it? A mummified house cat. It must have belonged to the Pharaoh. Mm. Mr. Boots. But that was your cat, Dale. Impossible. Mr. Boots was wide and fluffy and feisty and fun-loving. This is just a skeleton. Wait a minute. Nancy told me that he ran away. <gasps> potato, 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 potato. Potato, 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 Now you have a good time at your Grandpa Cotton's while we're gone. Fine, but I'm not taking a bath with that baby again. It's humiliating. Okay, everyone step away from the vehicle so I can execute a farewell donut. No, wait, drag it out, just go, go! Oh. Oh, you've been driving all morning, Hank. Why don't you take a break? I can take over for a while. Thanks, but I'm okay. Maybe next stop. Okay, Hank. Kansas is mine. I'm gonna tear this state a new one. Yeah, uh, maybe we ought to switch off after Kansas. I wouldn't want you to miss out on all that wheat. No, I'm still feeling surprisingly fresh. Thanks, though. You know, we're almost there. Why mess with success? Smile. Come on, Peggy, smile. I am sick of you bossing me around. Let me drive, then I will smile. Well, I explained to you in Nebraska, it would throw our weight distribution all out of whack. Maybe the coroner could take a photo of us after we bounced off the asphalt like a couple of rag dolls. Hank, that's bunk. I am driving. Uh, okay, but see, Peggy, the thing of it is, it just doesn't work that way with biker couples. Lumpy and Pepperoni Sue have a great relationship, and she never rides up front. In fact, the spot behind the driver is called the... the bitch seat. What? So that makes me your... No, no, no. It's a motorcycle term. I don't even think it's spelled the same. Forget I brought it up. My God. Maybe we should have taken the therapy. Hey, let's stop at a souvenir stand so I can get a T-shirt that says, My husband controlled my vacation and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. That would be a nice picture to show Dr. Rast, huh? Well, maybe we should get a motorcycle with a seat big enough for three people. Then Dr. Rast could ride along and analyze our marriage. Good idea. Now, hold on. We're going. We are not going anywhere. Oh, yes, we are. at the rate you're going, you will not be seeing mine anytime soon. Nice to see that you've gotten vulgar as well as selfish. 
Peggy released the brake lever. Nuh-uh. This brake lever's on my side, and I will hold it down as long as I want. Fine. We'll just park the bike here. Doesn't bother me. I can watch the motorized bar stool races. You know what? I am going to the Greyhound station to buy myself a ticket to Arlen. I'm sure they will let me sit anywhere I want on the bus. You can't sit in the bus driver's seat. You can't even talk to him. Oh, yeah! Oh, oh well, you quit your whining, you old woman. I'm wearing a bra. Bar stool coming through! Oops. Oh, excuse me, officer. But before you go, this map will lead you to a treasure that... Hi! I'm rich! And you, stop playing the blame game. Ha-ha! Are these fixable? No. How do you tell what size you are in a nipple ring? Pepperoni Sue? Huh? Who's asking? Oh, it's that old biker dude with the crazy girlfriend. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I almost messed you up, man. <laughs> Wouldn't they jitters? Look at the kick-ass skull ring Lumpy's getting me. Huh, a smiley one. <laughs> yeah, because I know how to make him smile. Mm -hmm. Woo-hoo! Mm -hmm. Man, that's good barbecue. So how are you and your old lady digging biker week? Uh, Peggy and I aren't speaking right now. She's upset because I wouldn't let her drive us. Hell, I'd rather get shanked than let my old lady drive. And I'd never ask. That's why our marriage works. Boundaries. Yeah, who knows her price? I do, who baby. Who knows her price, huh? I who do, knows baby. Her price? I do, Who knows her price, huh? You okay? You look like you licked a bad pickle. Pepperoni, show them your girls. Okay, but they're a little chap from the ride. Uh, well, that's okay. Thanks. Where are your glasses, hi? Oh, did you decide it's effeminate for a man to wear them? If so, I refer you to Mr. Larry Agman. If you care to know, a bar stool ran into me and broke my glasses. So just take the bike and I'll take the bus. Hey, this is crazy. Now get on. I will drive. But that would mean I have to ride on the other part of the seat. You know, behind. Oh, stop acting like a baby and get on. I am not a baby. a crushed pelvis. And a cape!
know what? This is just the right place, especially after our last outing. <laughs> Two piña coladas in men, and she starts talking about stealing a car. <laughs> Dark rum make me crazy. Ba jump peng tong sai sang ta lep dok sai sang ti lek di guai. What did she say? She think your feet lovely, and it an honor to work on them. Ah. Oh. Oh. Now, where in the heck did I park my... This way. My memory trick is usually fail-safe. When we got out of the car, I associated the parking section with William Shakespeare. So naturally, the car should be parked in 2B. Unless I was thinking of not 2B. <laughs> well, you look at those delinquents horsing around with those shopping carts. I bet they're... Oh, my God, it's Bobby. <laughs> Bobby? Joseph. This is what you are doing in your after-school program? Program was shut down, dude. Budget cuts. So we're playing shopping cart chicken. Hey, we can get them to push us. No after-school program? Now who can he gonna tutor? Bums and rail yard? This is ridiculous. Our kids should be enriching their minds, not using a parking lot as a playground. Something has got to be done. The people who canceled that after-school program are gonna wish we never found our car. Where is that frickin' thing? We have a real issue here. That after-school program is important. Absolutely. Our kids get out of school in the middle of the day when they air all those sex and drug-filled after-school specials. Oh, Peggy, let's take this to the school board tomorrow. They're not gonna know what hit them. Well, I gotta tell you, your initiative is really impressing me. And not just because you're ladies. Okay, girls. Hands in the middle. Let's go. For the children on three. Ready? One, two, three. For the children! For me! I'm not oh, I bet this must be very exciting for you men. Where you're from, you probably didn't have the freedom to criticize your government. Why would I criticize government in Laos? My father was general. I do what I want. I was peasant's worst nightmare. Thank you, Mrs. Chapman. Your request to ban sections F and S from the library dictionary has been noted. Okay, everybody have their talking points. Yeah. Oh, one little thing, though, Peggy Hill. Keep it short. Sometimes you go on and on and on. I find it charming, but you might lose other people. Good advice. And you probably should not call anyone hillbilly, or redneck, or dumb monkey. Check. Well, I guess that does it for tonight's meeting. Nice work. Excuse me. Peggy Hill and the Coalition to Save the After School Program at Tom Landry. Sorry, Mrs. Hill, but these meetings last from 6 to 8, and it is now... 8 o'clock. Oh, great. Now Connie gonna end up smashing carts like brain-dead delinquents. No offense. None taken. I wasn't even listening. Now, here's the game plan. We take things to the next level. New t-shirts? <laughs> no. Sweatshirts? Not yet. What we have to do is get on the school board. There is a seat open and an election coming up. Do you really think we can win an election? I know we can. You know, the turnout in these things is always very low. The secret is to find a group of voters that feels overlooked, then look at them. And I can get votes from Laotian community. I give $5 tip on French manicure. I'm the lady die. Well, I warned the folks over at Shady Pines Trailer Park about that tornado. They were so grateful they're still naming dogs after me. Great. We've got pockets of votes in the Laotian community and in the trailer parks. Then I score countywide with my two-year teaching degree. I wonder which one of us should run. I mean, Peggy's a ball of fire, and me and she's smart as a whip. Either way, our kids are in such good hands. 198, 199. Hey, these are supposed to be 200 thread count sheets. Damn Egyptians. But man, three women can't fill one position. This school board seat, not Boom Howard's hot tub. Well, when you think about it, I'm most logical choice. My daughter, a proven genius. Plus, my perfectly symmetrical face is pleasing to voters and inspires trust. And it sure would be nice to finally get a Laotian in power. We gotta eat that fish on Friday. They're gonna eat our rice noodles on Wednesday for breakfast. You've got the most school-related experience, the best interpersonal skills, and a smile that lights up a room. Yep, Peggy, I gotta say, I agree with all your reasons why you should be the one to run for school board. Well, thank you, Hank. But let's not lose sight of why I'm doing this. It's for the children. 
Now, I'm not saying men hate children, but I really love children. They are three out of the five points in my five-point plan. I haven't quite figured out the other two yet. I'm thinking something about America. Wow. Dynamite. Even though Dale says Principal Moss may try to assassinate us, I think this is going to be nothing but fun. I can't wait to get started. I have so many ideas I couldn't sleep all night, so I make pecan sandies. I appreciate your enthusiasm. Now, it's obvious who our candidate should be, but it would be presumptuous of me to do the nominating. So? I'm not sure how obvious it is. Oh, you mean me? No. <gasps> well, I'm not sure I'm the person for the job. Wait. Well, no. somebody got to do it for the children, and if no one else wants to run... No one? Five points! <laughs> All in favor of me? Well, y'all. Thank you, Peggy. Nancy? Well, since Peggy's okay with it. Okay, then. Done deal. Oh, hold on. Not that I want the job or anything, but... Then don't sweat it. Oh, and I wouldn't drink from there. Doggy has a cold. And I can't help but think that men did it on purpose. Those pecan sandies were astonishingly dry. Come on, Peggy. They're not shy people. If men wanted to choke you, she would have just reached over and done it with her hands. I will give her that. You know, Peggy, you could still be the power behind the scenes, just like that little fella in The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, yeah. You're right. And maybe next election, I can run another candidate. Then another. Before you know it, I'll be running the entire city from my bathtub. Mrs. Soup and Mrs. Gribble are waiting in the living room. Here's breakfast. And I typed out the monologues from Leno and Letterman. Good work. Now, I need you to highlight last week's Toonsberries and tell me why they're funny. Peggy, are we out of butter? It's behind the cottage cheese. Behind the cottage cheese! Okay, people, I'm glad to see you're all here. Now, let's... Uh... War room. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Thank you. That was Bobby. He was testing the line. It works. Okay, first off, we're going to need to make some signs. Uh, we're just about done making signs, Shug. Men to win. I don't get it. What not to get? I'm men. I want to win. Hmm, maybe we should focus group that. Nope, no go. Women 18 to 45 will be turned off. Here's what we're going to do. You know what would be a big help, Peggy Hill? Starbucks run. Oh, I'll have a Frappuccino. Bag of Madeline's. I'm all for men running for office, but she better not take my guns away. She's running for the school board. Then she better not take Joseph's guns away. Well, I'm not crazy about making holes in my lawn, but I guess it's for the children. You know, my lawn is already dead. Maybe we could put all the signs there. No offense, Bill, but this campaign is about hope. Oh, right. I'm not saying you have to use the moment of silence to pray that kids who don't believe in God can just sit quietly and smirk about how they've got it all figured out. Thank you, Mrs. Chapman. The next question is for Min Sufnifton-Phone. Hello, everybody. And to my Laotian friends, Sabaydi. Yeah, you've been talking about keeping the after-school program going? I think I hear the sound of my property taxes going up. And you fat cats with your pie in the sky programs and your free prescription drugs? No, no, no. That's not me. I do not want to increase taxes. Yeah, sure. You'd love it. No, no. You're not listening, Jethro. Oh, this is ugly. Someone has to stop the bleeding. What my candidate is trying to say is that we will cut the fat and leave the muscle. I know what I'm trying to say. It's what I just say. Please bear with my candidate. Obviously, English is not her first language. But how about a hand for her courage? <gasps> you crazy? Get out of here! The thing to remember, people, is that you are not going to have to tighten your belt because we are going to fix the pants! Give me that. You need me. Fix the pants! Uh, can I ask the candidate a question? What are you going to do to raise educational standards? Without raising taxes... Fat cat! Let's see how you handle this one. We all concerned about educational standards. And I tell you where the problem is. The teachers. 
Did you know our school system require only two year degree to be substitute teacher? Is that true? So you want to know how I raise standards without raising taxes? I tell you after I look into your hearts and you look into mine. No teacher, full time or substitute, can teach our kids without having a four year college degree. Wait, I only have a two year degree. What? Hands! Children! America! She's taking teaching away from me. That's my life. How dare she? I groomed her, I taught her everything, and she has the nerve to stab me in the back. That is just not done in politics, Hank. There's no way I'm going back to college. I'm a teacher. I'm done learning. Can you believe that woman? I'm real sorry what happened to you, Shug. But the important thing is to keep the after-school program alive, right? The what? Oh, yeah, of course. For the children. But can we really trust men to deliver? I mean, come on, this is a woman who makes dumb blonde jokes behind your back. Men makes dumb blonde jokes behind my back? Hey, don't drag me into your little cat fight. I just came over to save the after-school program. Oh, that witch. Here's what I'm thinking. We dig up some dirt on men, and you do an expose on the local news. Then, after her support is totally gone, I jump into the race and give that freaking dog the beating of her life! Well, I don't know. That kind of reporting isn't really my arena. Nancy. How much longer do you think you can milk this sexy weather girl act? Two, three, two years tops? This is your chance to be taken seriously. Get on the air and deliver the biggest news flash of your career. Peggy Hill is running for school board. Well, I do want to be taken seriously, and I have some ideas. Oh, you... honey, I'm sure you do. It's just that no one ever listens to me. Okay, okay. And we have to think constructively and not get emotional about this. Now, how do we destroy men? Oh, there she is. Smile and wave. Smile and wave. I bury you. What are they saying, Dale? Khan is asking men to pass the potatoes. Oh, come on. I need something juicier than that. I tried to slip in their house as a paper boy, but Mr. Supernoosum phone recognized me. But I grabbed their garbage. Look who's too good to hang on to a Sizzler coupon. What do we have here? Come to Mama. And that cold front looks like it wants to stay put right through the weekend. So while there might be a spring in your step, there's none in the forecast. Muy bien, Nancy. Just how much fun is a barrel of monkeys? Well, two radio DJs. And Miguel, here's some advice on the upcoming school board election. I'd think again if you're planning on voting for men's super noose and phone. I don't think these are the kinds of pay-per-view programs that a friend of the children should be watching. Ah! I told you, Min, but no! You just had to see Hobo's boxing. Oh, yeah. Fortunately, there is an alternative. I know someone who'd be perfect for the job. She's a dedicated parent. She's smart. And she's more than just a pretty face. She's me! Nancy Hicks Gribble. Pick Hicks! What? And if elected, I promise oh, well. to turn Arlen's school to... Wait! I'm running to... Peggy Hill for school board! Hey, ow, oh, 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 oh. Will you let these are my people? They want to hear me speak! Arlen! Peggy, do I have these in the right order? You better. Here comes someone. Big smile. Oh, it's only con. Phase two complete! Van rented, ready to pick up constituents and sweep election. Phase three, ha! A victory dance! Ah! Ooh, hello! You rent minivan? What you thinking? Minivan seats seven people. I need 15 to swing election. How much Peggy Hill paying you to be jackass? Something's wrong with the bug. I can't hear a thing. But I see they have a new van. I bet they're using it to buzz their constituents to the polling place. Well, we'll outvan them, but we'll keep ours in the garage. They'll never see it coming. Idiots. <laughs> Why isn't this working? I rewired it myself. You better get out of here, Grimo. I am this close to kicking your ass. No one threatens me. I'm this close to kicking your ass. Oh, yeah? Well, now I'm... This close to kicking your ass. Let's settle this like men. Hank, 
Whose fingers are closer? Whoa, whoa. Just because our wives are at each other's throats doesn't mean we have to be. Oh, easy for you to say. Your wife a loser. And now, now, Con, maybe Hank's right. I say we let bygones be... Yeah! Ah! Sneak attack! I win! Ah! I'm so hungry and tired I messed up the last 50 buttons. Bobby's out. Hank's in. Fine. When are we having dinner? It's 9.15. Ugh, fine. Here's $10. Go. Oh. All right, Joseph. Easy. Easy. Joseph, stop the sign. So, they have a van. Okay, Hank. Min has her support here. I'll concede little Leos to her. Nancy's support is, well, she's been blathering about all the dogs named after her in this trailer park. Which leaves all of this for me. Hank, we're gonna need a bus. We're not spending money to rent a bus. It's for the freaking children! <laughs> Hank, the phone poll numbers are not good. The projections show Nancy with four votes, Min also with four votes, and Peggy Hill, zero. Now, I could increase my margin of error to five votes, but even then, I am just winning by the skin of my teeth. Well, when people see that flyer you put in the penny saver... That doesn't come out until after Election Day. Now, I need to motivate my base, the hardcore constituents who would fight and die for me. Hank, you have to make me a base. Call your customers. Uh, I don't really think I should mix politics and propane. People's passions run pretty high about both those. Hank, I cannot allow myself to be beaten by Nancy or men. I could never show my face in this neighborhood again. I know, but with your numbers being zero and all, maybe you should just prepare a concession speech. What? You want me to concede to those two? Hank, you're out. Peggy, you're in. I'm no weather bimbo, but forecast looking cloudy for you to win. Just because I'm beautiful doesn't mean I'm harmless, Shug. Have you ever wondered what happened to the weathercaster before me? It's the voting ban. Yes, the voting ban is here. It's the voting ban to take you to the polling place. So let's all get on the van right now and vote for Nancy Hicks. Scribble for school board. Hey there, friend. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm here for the voters. Voting truck already done come and took him. But, but I'm the one who was supposed to have done come and took him. Hang on there, mister. I want to talk to you about that fancy hat you got on your head there. Uh, but I don't want to talk about my fancy hat. Ah! <laughs> Hello, election bus here. Somebody! Down, Nancy. Hey, driver. When are we getting to the polls? Never. not believe we lost to that Chapman loony. Yeah, not only that, it say there she's getting rid of after-school program. And biology. And all offensive encyclopedias, whatever that means. I guess we kind of burnt the toast on this one. <sighs> hey, she only got 18 votes? I hijacked twice as many of your voters on my bus yesterday. We could have crushed her. Yeah, into fine powder. Ow, my eye! Cool. Maybe we should spend some time with the kids today. We could be their after-school program. Maybe we take them to... A museum. Or the zoo. Which is a museum of animals.
I bought this whetstone the day Bobby was born. I can't believe he's ready to sharpen his first mower blade. Son, you're a teenager now on your way to becoming a man. This will help you on the journey. Wow, I've always wanted one of these. No, no, stop that. This is for sharpening mower blades. You'll sharpen every Saturday, and when you've shown me you can handle the responsibility, you'll get to use those blades to mow the lawn. Okay. Hey, don't put that down there. Oh. Oops, sorry. Dang it, Bobby. You're gonna rake leaves until that whetstone is paid off. And every Thursday, you're gonna bag them and drag them to the curb so they can be picked up by Garbageman Morehouse. How about he grabs the bags himself? He seems to like it, Dad. He's made a career of it. Start raking. Uh, what the? Uh, Bobby? Coming! Oh! Eh? I've been practicing all morning. That's it. You're grounded until you're ready to pick up those leaves. Okay. I mean it, mister. Can I take the rake with me? No. Dinner's ready. In a minute. Son, I'm sorry I had to come down hard on you, but you're... What are you doing? Just smelling stuff. Uh-huh. The clock radio smells like my Game Boy, but it tastes like my library card. I wonder if it smells different when it's on. So where's Bobby? I want to talk to someone while you work. He's grounded. Not that he cares. He's just sitting there, uh, smelling things in his room. <sighs> that boy ain't right. Don't blame Bobby. You've been babying him ever since he was a baby. I don't baby him. I've explained responsibility to him a hundred times. Explain? You don't explain responsibility to a child. You pound it into them with steel-toed boots. Uh, well, I don't really know if you... I know, and I'll tell you. We gotta chisel the man out of the baby fat via the Fort Burke Academy. That's what worked for me. I always wanted to go to the Academy. And I wish I could have sent you. Unfortunately, you were such a bumbling moron, I couldn't vouch for you. I think I would have made a great cadet. Nah, you wouldn't have been no good. But if you'd gone, you'd know how to handle Bobby. Yep, even the Academy's two-week boot camp does more than most parents can do to their kids in a lifetime. Now, Bobby, he'd make a fine cadet. Huh. I do not know how Bobby gets this cape so wrinkled. Yeah, I don't know what to do about him either. What would you think about letting the instructors at Fort Burke take a crack at him? Cotton's old school? Sure. And then maybe this summer we can send him to Cotton's old POW camp. Peggy, I talked to the principal and he assured me that they are tough but not rough. He spent a long time on the phone explaining the distinction. Come on, today you're ironing his cape. If we don't take drastic action, tomorrow there'll be a top hat in the picture. Bobby, it's your gampy. We got a little present for you. Hey, Ging Ging, what'd you bring me? Wow, a costume. You want the truth? You can't handle the truth. It's perfect. This ain't no costume, boy. It's a uniform. Standard issue for all cadets at Fort Burke Academy. Huh? Yep, we're giving you the privilege of attending the Academy's two-week boot camp program. Enjoy your spring break, son. Boot camp? Can't we work something out? What if I agreed to a spanking? You can have both. I'm not sure what this means, but I once heard that when you're stuck in an unpleasant situation, it helps to just lie back and think of England. That's enough, Hank's wife. If you got more feelings to express, get in the kitchen and put them in a bunt cake. Hey, diddle. <laughs> Go on, Bobby. Whenever you see a cripple plate, yell P diddle and punch your dad. I'm not much in the mood to play games, Grandpa. Come on, boy, take your teehees while you can. Soon enough, all the silly is gonna get beaten out of you. For good. You'll be fine, Bobby. But if you start crying, just try to push the tears onto your forehead so it'll look like sweat. In my day, the principal was the meanest bitch God ever put on one leg. 
He'd lean on a desk with both hands and swing his leg at you. Then when you were standing there shocked that a one-legged man had kicked you, he'd bite you. Oops. Well, huh. How you like that? Must have over reminisced and brought up my pain water. Oh. P. Diddle. Here it is, boys. Ah, ain't it beautiful? That, my friend, is the hole. If I had a nickel for every boy that went loco in there, I'd be eating nickel soup. They can put a boy in a hole? No, they... They got to! It's hard to be willful if your will's been broken. What are you doing? Well, I was planning on coming in with you guys. I thought I explained this to you 30 years ago. You ain't good enough. I was just going to help Bobby get You've his... helped enough. Starting now, Fort Burke takes over. So keep yourself and your hippie style of parenting outside the gate. Dad? Good Lord. They're going to have to get bigger sticks to beat the frosting out of these fatties. <laughs> yeah, but they'll do it. Colonel Hill, it's an honor to finally meet our most decorated alumnus. You darn skippy it is, but I don't want my boy getting no special handling. I assure you, Colonel, he'll get the standard treatment. <laughs> <laughs> well, boy, may God bless you. Not that it would help you in here. I could hardly wait to see my grandson all toughened up. You think you folks could mail me copies of his daily beating logs? <laughs> Colonel Hill, you do realize things have changed since your time here. All right, you can email him to me. Lights up! I suggest you get as much sleep as you can before the senior cadets come by to welcome you. <laughs> oh no, I made code yellow. Oh, God, my grandpa told me they come in and beat you with sacks full of frozen oranges. <gasps> oh, dang, someone's coming. Lie back and think of England. Hugh Grant, Spice Girls, Paddington. I don't get it. Why was that supposed to be scary? Well... Five more minutes like that, and I guess it might have caused some hearing damage. Just think, when Bobby comes home from Fort Burke, he's going to be respectful, obedient, and easy to manage. That's right, Hank. Just like a, a show dog. My grandpa says that all you get for breakfast is a spoonful of salt and some stale bread. Oh, man. That's how they brainwash you. They starve you first. Okay, please, move it. Crepe Station closes in five minutes. Ah, uh, you sure are some good peas, Peggy. What's your secret? Microwave. I wonder if Bobby's being forced to sleep in mud or dung right now. Wait, what's today, Tuesday? Dung. <laughs> no one is answering, Hank. Oh, they're probably all bound in gag. Oh, my God. What if the wires from this doorbell are connected to his nipples? It is worse than I could have imagined. Will you let us in? Let us in! We demand to see Bobby Hill. Peggy, protocol. Sir, permission to see Cadet Hill while keeping a respectful distance from the grounds. Oh, you're his father. We talked on the phone. You're welcome to come in. I am? Of course. And so is your lawyer. We have nothing to hide. <laughs> your concern for your son is perfectly normal, but I can assure you Cadet Hill is excelling here. Mom! Dad! Bobby! Honey, are you okay? Blink if you're not. I'm great, ma'am. Cadet Hill, why don't you take your parents to survival crafts class? I can attend a class at Fort Burke? 
Well, I won't let you down, Bobby. I mean, Cadet Hill. On the battlefield, you may find yourself stranded without enough water to survive. But with a sufficient quantity of mud, you will have the ability to create your own bowl pot, urn decanter, or beaker to collect rainwater. Very nice work, Mr. Hill. We'll make sure to have that glazed before you go. Did you hear that, Peggy? I'm doing it. I'm Fort Burke material. Where's dinner? It's three o'clock, Dad. I can't eat excuses. You heard from Bobby? Yeah, he's, uh, surviving. Surviving? Yeah. He's got too much of you and that one to be surviving at Fort Burke. Even I barely survived, and I didn't have gas monkey and Sasquatch for parents. I will have you know, Cotton, that Bobby is thriving. We went to Fort Burke yesterday and saw him. What in the name of Ned? They ain't supposed to let you two on the campus. They are required to by law, and we sat in on one of his classes, Hank. Show him the bowl you made. What the? You made a bowl? Well, yeah. It's a combat bowl. Bobby made one, too. Combat bowl? The only bowl he's supposed to make is from a hollowed-out skull. <laughs> How you doing in there, you poor saps? <laughs> what the? Ooh, is that all the respect you got for me? You go and turn my childhood home into a giant sissy factory. How's my grandson supposed to toughen up with you candy in his ass? Sir, when I got here from Antioch College... You're fired! Get out! You can't just fire me. Is that a fact? Okay, Powderpuff, I would like you to speak to Clean Latrine Jean, who happens to be the chairman of your board of trustees. General Jean Jefford? That's right. Uh, hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very well. I Can I keep the Aeron desk chair? Thank you, sir. Hey, after this, let's go to the mess and get a smoothie. Grandpa? The previous commander was just as soft and ineffective as your parents, and your parents are not paying good money for that. Now, I'm here to make sure they get their money's worth. With interest! <gasps> There's gonna be changes around here, and ain't none of you gonna like it. Day is night. Joy is pain. Love is hate. <laughs> get thinking, Private McFainty. Sleep up, because starting at 0400 hours, you don't get no more. See you at sunrise, Weekies. <laughs> State your business. Grandpa. Gampy. Ging ging. It's Bobby here. Your bing bing. I ain't your ging ging, and you ain't my bing bing. And if you think I'm giving you special treatment, well, you are right on target. Good, because I told the fellas. Hush, boy. I will special treat you to a double dose of pain. Why? I want you to come out of this cauldron of burning hell the best damn cadet you can be. Thanks, but you don't have to worry about that. All we really want is the phone service back. And the mattresses for our beds. Quiet! Now, your daddy tells me you have a problem raking leaves. Well, I guarantee you won't have a problem raking leaves after you've picked up every leaf on this campus with a fork! Ah, what the hell are you doing, boy? You gave me a fork, so I figured I'd eat the leaves. Boy, am I stuffed. Ah. Just kidding, Grandpa. Well, maybe this is my fault for not properly motivating you. If it's food you want, I could eat. You don't want to rake, then maybe you need more energy. This rotten pile of backwash is all for you, boy. And you're going to keep shoveling it down until it starts coming up. Okay. <sighs> I did 
dinner's over. Now I'm gonna give you something cold for dessert. Okay. Anything cracks if you freeze it long enough. How you doing, boy? I'm okay. Mom says I'm naturally built for winter climates. God dang it! You're going into the hole. The hole's what broke me, and that's what's gonna break you, too. Time to say goodbye, soldier. Go and get your grow-up box. Ding, ding. Quit your still standing. Start running till you hit the horizon. <laughs> I wonder what Bobby's doing now. Probably having a bull session in the barracks with his new pals. Bobby? Bobby, are you okay? Tap once if you're okay. Oh, hey, Dee Dee. I've got the new TV guide here with all the judge shows circled like my dad likes. Is he around? No, Cotton's at Fort Burke. What? He has temporarily taken over the academy. Oh, God, no. Yes, he is ruling with an iron fist. He threw Bobby in the hole about three days ago. Oh! He ain't gonna be a pretty sight, boys. Humpty Dumpty's done crack, but now we can put him back together and rebuild him as a super cadet. Dad, are you crazy? Let him out. I was just fixing to. Bobby? Bobby? Give him some air. Bobby? Mm. Huh? Oh. Hey, Dad. I've tried a mattress, I've tried cement, I'm a mattress guy. <laughs> Bobby, you're okay? Same old, same old. I was merciless. I dropped down onto him like a steam trunk full of concrete. You didn't budge him, did you? <laughs> I, I don't get it. What's so funny? Well, I told you it wasn't easy. You didn't believe me, did you, Dad? I guess he was just born a pile of mush. Well, I guess you could say that, but... Maybe mush isn't all bad. You can keep stomping on it, but it's all give. It just stays mush. You can't build it up, but you can't break it down either. In a funny way, mush kind of has the edge. <laughs> can you imagine that pile of mush in the POW camps? He would have driven them toad joes crazy. Three days with Bobby, and they would have quit the war. <laughs> yeah. I wish you could have seen the old Fort Burke, Hank, but I guess those days is gone. You know, Colonel, all this time I've been talking to you, you didn't grant me permission to speak. That's right. That's practically insubordination. You better drop and give me 20, boy. Yes, sir. Two, three, four. No, no, you're doing it wrong, cadet. Start over. How'd you do it, Bobby? How'd you survive the hole? Well, I admit I started getting a little worried. But then I found some inspirational graffiti on the wall, and it kept me going. Cool. Come on. Let's go.
balloon. Whose birthday is it? Joseph's or Nancy's? No, wait. It's my birthday, isn't it? Bill, it's a weather balloon. And your birthday's, uh, was last week. Uh, sorry, Bill. Happy belated birthday. Thank you, Hank. I've got 18 more of these. A balloonist dozen. Hey, man, how about that? Dang old dude, man, true story, man. They got, got a, all them balloons up and down on a lawn chair, man. They're going around 16,000 feet, man. That old Bruce Dern, but played them in a, in a dang old movie, man. Boomhauer, that guy almost died. You can't just strap some weather balloons to a lawn chair and fly to the store for some candy. That's ridiculous. <sighs> I need to focus. Our biggest propane sale of the year starts tomorrow. I can't afford to be thinking about helium. Yeah, that's ridiculous, Boomhauer. This is it. The grill stravaganza. Okay, let's do it. On three. One, two, three. For the customer. Enrique, nice clip on. Looking good. Donna, thanks for clearing your desk. I know how much you like your unicorns. Joe Jack, what's with the hat? Sorry, honey. But this year, I'm going to be selling more grills than you. In fact, your winning streak's about to go up in flames. Oh, because I am? Oh, good God, that's hot. Do you know why I sell the most propane every grill stravaganza, Joe Jack? I educate the customer so they can make an informed decision. That's my magic trick. Oh, rabbit done peed on my head. Boy, that Joe Jack. <laughs> He's never going to get anywhere until he learns that sales is all about character. Well, unfortunately, that is the sort of lesson he will only learn on his deathbed. And no one wants to buy a grill from a dying man. Hey, you know who might get a kick out of learning some character? Bobby. Maybe I'll take him to work. Show him how his old man pays for his bath salts. Cookies. Bobby, that's not a cookie. It's a sales cookie. When you make a sale, you get a cookie and you get to ring the bell. It's asinine, but it works for some people. The sales cookie's the sweetest cookie you'll ever taste, honey. Every time I hear a bell, I starts to drooling. And this is the sales board. It's like the giant scoreboard at the Masters. Except instead of Tiger Woods, you have me. Wow, cookies, my name in blue marker. What do you want me to sell first? <laughs> you want to make a sale on your first day? <laughs> uh, God bless you, boy. <laughs> uh, I think you better watch this first. Morning, sir. I see you admiring the Wagner line. Why don't you give these brochures a read, talk them over with your wife or a trusted older family member, and come back if and when you're ready. We'll be here. Okay, well, mm, thanks. Yes. Gives me chills every time. I don't get it. You let him leave. At the end of the month, you'll get it, when my customers return educated and ready to buy. That leads us to lesson number one. So straighten up your tie, because you're going to meet a lady. This is Lucy, the tank wipe trainer. What exactly does wiping our grimy tank have to do with selling propane? Everything. When you talk tanks with the customer, it won't just be talk. You'll have smelled, touched, and tasted more tanks than he'll have ever seen. But I want to sell grill. And when you're ready, you will. All right, now what you do is wipe from her head down to her feet. No, no, Bobby, remember, head to feet, you won't cause a leak. Feet to head, everyone's dead. Tether, tethered. I'm gonna be floating with the angels. What's that gun for? There is a small to large chance you will develop high altitude pulmonary edema, which means your capillaries will flood with fluid, preventing adequate oxygenation and a spiral of worsening hypoxia, leading to a slow and painful death. I don't think I want that. That's why I got the gun. If you start feeling any shortness of breath, rub your belly and I will give you one of Dr. Dale's 38 caliber pain pills. What? Don't worry, I'm a good shot. Remove the sandbags, Boomhauer. It works! It works! Oh, it's so beautiful up here. Okay, when we release the second tether, Bill should gradually float 30 feet into the air as planned. 
or he will soar uncontrollably into the stratosphere. Huh? Cut the cord, Boomhauer. Wait! He's given the signal. Stick out your chest so I can get a clean shot at your heart. Man, you use them dang old escape rope, man. I made it. I'm all right. You're not doing it right. Hey, man, I better shoot this dang old balloon, man. Gone, man. Huh. Ow. 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 Congratulations, Bobby. That's the pain you get from not taking shortcuts. <sighs> okay. You know, I think he may really have what it takes to be a great propane salesman. Look, Peggy, he can barely make it to his room. Oh, he can't. Hey, Jojack, my dad's making me calibrate all the flanges. Does this flange look calibrated to you? Well, it beats me. I've never learned that stuff. I just know about moving product. Wait a minute. Then why am I stuck back here doing this? All that bunk about learning the fundamentals. It's just a way to get me to do his grunt work. Good afternoon, sir. Madam. May I help you with one of our fine products? Well, do you actually work here? Yes, I do. This beauty is the Char King. Now, I want you to know we buy our grills from the most reputable suppliers uh -huh. in the state. And these are the beautiful in your yard. And Bobby, no! Way to hook him, cowboy. Buck, I apologize. This won't happen again. Hell, I hope it does. He just sold a Char King. He what? Hit it out the park on his first at bat. Bobby, I'm deputizing you, sales boy. But, sir, he doesn't know the fundamentals. He didn't sell a grill. Someone bought it from him. He's not ready. Hey, Dad, what's this sound like? <coughs> Sounds like I'm ready. <coughs> Beginner's luck is a curse, Bobby. If you don't learn the basics, you'll be just another also-ran instead of a still-running. Well... <coughs> Doing those basics might be your way, but it's not my way. It's not my way, it's the right way. Huh. If only there was some easy way to figure out whose way works better. All right, mister, you're on. Fine. I cook two inch steaks. That's my predilection. Is 22,000 BTUs enough for me? BT, what's the what now? BTUs. You know, the heat index. Uh, oh. Well, the thing with that is. Uh, yeah, I'd be interested to hear that too, Bobby. <clears throat> the heat, huh? Well, it ain't gonna be as hot as the Dallas Cowboys this season. <laughs> now, they got a team, am I right? What are you talking about? Dallas stinks this year. Which is why you're gonna want to spend Sunday afternoons grilling instead of watching TV. Amen to that, brother. Hello? Anyone? Anybody? Santa? No. Yes! Yes! <laughs> if you get your parents, I will give you a toy. Hey! Goodbye, Santa. I love you. Plus, with the chrome reinforcement, you don't have to worry about her blowing up. Oh, grills blow up? Oh, just the cheap ones. Uh, that's not true, sir. Every grill we sell here is absolutely safe and of the finest quality. Oh, are they? Joe Jack, what do you think about the non-chrome grills? What, the Widowmakers? No, no, I have all the safety information. Thanks, but I'd rather not take any chances. I'll go with the chrome one.
You and you, my truck now. You two are selling propane like it's a diseased pet that needs a home. That stuff might fly over at Thetherton Fuels, but I'm putting a stop to it. Mr. Strickland's happy. The customers are happy. The only one not happy is you. But that's not our fault. It's because you're in a slump. How many times do I have to tell you my sales come in at the end of the month? Okay. You got the stank on you and everybody can smell it. And then this morning, I heard Bobby and Joe Jack refer to a customer as a mark. <sighs> Every single lesson he's learning is wrong. Well, what do you expect? Joe Jack is racking up sales, and from what your son tells me, you don't have squat. Children imitate success, Hank. I catch my students imitating me all the time. Peggy, you know my system. I'll have plenty of success when all my sales come in at the end of the month. We cannot afford to take that chance, Hank. According to Rob Reiner, these years are critical for Bobby's core value development. You've got to dazzle him with sales, or, or he may never listen to you again. Come on, pick up the pace. But, but that's not my system. Then get a new one. Just pretend you're one of those jerks at the sales-a-thon. Okay, on three. One, two, three. For Bobby. <sighs> Hello, uh, I would like to sell you a grill now. Well, we're just looking. Uh, look no further? Oh, great. Here we go. Yep. Here we go on an exciting journey that ends with you buying a grill. <laughs> uh, you want me to tell you a joke? So I pulled that tooth I was telling you about. Arlen, do you read me? Come in, Dale. Boom power. Bill, is that you? You didn't say over. Over. Dale! Thank God. I need water. Be more specific. What town? What type of tree? Over. I don't know. I fell asleep. Oh, wait. Here come a bunch of kids. Oh, thank God. Somebody came. Hey, you. What are you doing up there? Did Eduardo send you? No. See, the wind changed, and I, I'm just so dizzy. <laughs> so how come you're hanging from a tree? You a piñata? <laughs> hey, piñata. It's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Quit it, no. Wow, Bill's new ballooning buddies sound like a hoot. I should have gone first. Uh, Mr. Strickland, I'm glad you're here. I know I'm usually kicking it into gear this time of the month, and I promise... No, don't sweat it, old top. So you're in a slump. Now, come on. I still got plenty of use for you yet. Ugh. Fatherton. Gentlemen, you all know Hank Hill, my number one salesman, 12 years running. Stop stalling, Buck. Where's your bet? Right here. I'm betting Hank. What? If you win, you get him for the week. All right. I call. But, sir, you always bet Joe Jack. Uh, I can't this time. He's selling. You're crapping the big goose egg. All right. Bet's on. Show him. Two pair, seven high. Full house. No! Oh, that's where them aces were hiding. Hank, you stand there and look like a poker chip. I'll come get you in a minute. Bobby, everything I told you about sales being patience and character, it's all still true. I didn't show much of either, and now I'm paying the price. Please promise me you'll learn from my mistakes. Uh, okay. Come on, Bobby. There's some nuns out there who don't know diddly about markup. When I open this handkerchief, your credit card will magically be back in one piece. Oh, la Oh, jeez. Ha 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 ha. And you can buy this on the layaway. This here's our crown jewel, our wet apron contest. You do good by me, I'll let you work the hose. You 
told me I could bang the dents out of my canister with a hammer. Are you trying to kill me? I, uh, what I meant to say was, uh, I'll get the manager. 40, 50. Uh, uh, uh Bobby, I, I'm not good with unhappy customers. Uh, that's your old man's specialty. If they ask for me, I'm, uh, uh yeah, good luck, Bob. Please be patient, ma'am. I can't find my pen. Joe Jack, so help me God, if you took my pen again. You don't know anything about the BTUs on this grill. It took me four hours to cook my two-inch steaks. Uh, uh, maybe. Look, free cookies. Cookies? I'm a diabetic. Hey, what are you doing? Get back here. Uh, sure, this grill is perfect for indoor grilling or heating. And we at Thatherton guarantee that the gas will never, ever run out. He won me in a card game. Get out of here while you still can. Run, run, run! That way! I just saw a jet ski payment run out the door. What happened? Look, I can sell propane upside down and blindfolded, but not with my integrity tied behind my back. There must be some sort of honest work that needs to be done around here. Hey, mister, have you seen Hank Hill? Dad, what are you doing wiping tanks? I thought that grunt work was only for rookies. Bobby, did you listen to anything I tried to tell you? The great ones practice the basics. So... You thought I could be a great one, too? I trusted you with the flanges on your second day. I think that says it all. Things are kind of melting down over at Strickland. We need you back. Well, I still got a debt to pay here. Uh, Mr. Strickland gave me the 20 bucks to pay Thatherton. Huh. Well, that must just be the first installment. Let's go satisfy some customers. Your turn. All right, who can I help first? What seems to be the problem? Well, my tank ran out. It was supposed to be a 50-gallon tank. Ma'am, that's only a 10-gallon tank. Must have been a miscommunication. I'll take care of it. I'm glad you are now officially satisfied. Well, that was some day, huh, Bobby? Actually, it was pretty horrible. Tick, ticky, ticky. Come on, baby. I'm sorry you're not going to get the sales award this year, Dad. Maybe I should get back to Lucy. It's foot to head, right? <sighs> no, then everyone's dead, Bobby. Remember, it's head to feet, but we'll work on that tomorrow. Why don't you go lock the door for me? Closing time! Joe Jack is the winner, and I kill is the loser. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll take this one too, Slumpy. Oh, what can I do you for? You're the guy who gave me the brochures. The first time I read them, they made no sense, but then it started sinking in. It usually does. So the guy says, I'm switching my trailer park to propane. I need 500 tanks. A minute before closing. You should have seen Joe Jack. He pulled a flask out of his desk and started drinking. It was so funny. Yep, every grill stravaganza is different, but they always end the same.
How's it going, Joe Jack? I lost my bathroom key again, honey. Mr. Strickland? Yeah, Hank! I just lost a pile of money and a pair of Italian loafers to that sleazebag Lane Bradley. Oh, and you can cancel the morning run to Strickland North. I lost that, too. I gotta take my mind off my boo-hoos. Donna, find me that website where the elephant does his business on the man's head. Sir, I... I don't like to ask personal questions, but are you okay? My wife threw me out. What? Yeah, I had Donna over at the house. The old crow found us in flagrante on the credenzi. It's all over. She said she could handle my drinking bitches and my gambling and even turn a blind eye to my extramarital escapades, but not when they happen all at once. And on her birthday... Oh, I don't know what to do anymore, Hank. Uh. Uh. There, there, sir. Today we start cross country. Every day for the next two weeks, you kids are going to be running. For those of you a little overweight or not athletic, this will be difficult. But so will life. Now go! Uh, Coach, if you don't mind, I prefer to play to my strengths. Why well, don't I just hang back and hold the clipboard? I'll move it, Hill. Hey, Maggie, if we stay together, neither one of us will be last. I let you hide behind me in dodgeball. I'm through with you. Running days are over. I'm home. Table for one near the air conditioner? Sorry, kid. This is high tea. We require a jacket and tie and long pants and no sneakers. Doesn't passion count for anything? My Bible study teacher is going on vacation, and he won't let me be the substitute teacher while he's gone. I think he's just jealous of my close relationship with Jesus. Oh, Luann, give him more credit. Maybe he genuinely thinks you won't be good at it. Nobody has any faith in me. I'm telling Jesus that you weren't any help. You are not going to believe what's happened at work. Buck gambled away Strickland North. It's gone. Gone. And you are surprised by this behavior? Hank, the man is a lying, cheating, drunken, gambling, philandering adulterer. I know he has his demons, but he's also the guy who took me under his wing and brought me into the world of propane and propane accessories. There's a money-back guarantee on those. It's not the store's policy, it's just mine. You do a damn fine job of selling dungarees there, uh, Hank. But let me tell you what I'm selling. Propane. Huh. Propane. He was a window into the exciting world of clean burning heat. Yet you keep these tanks shiny and clean, they reflect more sunlight and stay cooler. That means less gas escapes through this here valve, see? <sighs> I can't turn my back on him. Without Buck, I'd be selling pants. I'd never tell him this, but I think of him as a, a mentor. Really? I thought I was your mentor. <sighs> I'm worried, fellas. Buck's never been this bad. And this time, I'm afraid he's going to take the business down with him. You know what a friend would do? He'd get me to burn down said other friend's failing business for the insurance money. Just say the word. Or don't. I'll get the signal. Just nod your head. Or don't. Shut up, Dale. So, we're on. <sighs> Huh. Buck's back on the floor. You gotta buy this grill. I need the money. There's a horse that can make all this right. You got cash? Huh? Huh? Uh, sir, why don't I take you home? Good idea. Oh, wait a second. Okay. <laughs> I'm so goddamn lonely. Hey, you know, before I drop you off, there's someone I'd like to introduce you to. I think you two might hit it off. 
Can we go yet? No, not until you hear me out. Sir, the flame in you has grown dim. But if you'll just take your hands off the valve and let him in, the Lord will fill you with his gas. So I'll just leave you two by yourselves here. You probably have a lot of catching up to do. You cannot fix Buck Strickland. He is drowning in a sea of his own addictions. And if there is one thing that I learned at YWCA camp, you cannot save a drowning man. I used to like that song. Now it scares me. Greetings, fellow Christians. Ah, oh, there's the shepherd that brought this lost sheep back into the fold. I did? Huh, so it worked. Bless you, Hank. Well, in fairness, I didn't really do anything. I just alley-ooped you to the Lord. Well, you brought me to church where I met an angel who showed me the light. This woman is going to keep me on the straight and narrow path to the promised land. Praise be. Nothing but net, Lord. I understand why God loves Buck. He has to. But what kind of pathetic doormat of a woman would fall for him? Come on, Peggy. I bet she's just some nice old lady who used to be a nurse or something. You know how those churchy types are. They like a fixer-upper. Hey, Uncle Hank, Aunt Peggy! Look who I saved! Hallelujah! Oh, good Lord! What the hell is going on here? A private Bible study class. Praise the Lord! Luann, Platter Family Conference on the patio. Ahara! Is he hitting on you? Is he coming on to you? Has he put his hands on you? What has he done to you? Nothing, Aunt Peggy. I found him at the church, and he was so sad and lost. I told him about the Word of God, and he volunteered me to be his private Bible tutor. Me? A Bible tutor? <sighs> Luann, you're on the naive side, but even you cannot be buying this horse manure. Buck is my student. I am his teacher, and the Lord is our principal. And until he rings the bell, class will not be dismissed. Uh, are you trying to date my niece, sir? No, oh, old top. I don't blame you for thinking the worst of me, but I'm a changed man. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have to get back to class. You know, Luann, it's awful hot out here. Oh, well, maybe next week we could study in the pool. Bible class in the pool? Like a baptism? <laughs> yeah, I'll bring my swimsuit. Are these English cucumbers in the cucumber sandwiches? The regular ones come back on me. I don't know. Well, would you find out for me, please? It's so nice to see such a refined young man. My grandson steals from me. Would you care to join us? That depends. Would you care to share your lemon curd? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hank, you've been very unclear on this whole thing. Do you or do you not want me to burn down your workplace? Dang it, Dale, I don't want you going anywhere near Strickland. Things have been great since Buck found religion. Again, your words say no, but your body language says torch that sucker. unbe freaking leaveable <laughs> yeah. Peggy, will you knock it off? Why can't you just accept the man's been saved? It doesn't cost you anything. They are in the pool, Hank. Luann is in her bikini. Her hair is wet, sopping wet. Well, she's supposed to be giving him a Bible lesson. I'm going to make sure it stays a Bible lesson. So, that's why it's better to be a little bird sitting in heaven than to be the biggest, toughest grizzly bear in hell. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yay! <laughs> Fellowship hug! Woo! <laughs> Amen to that. Dude, what are you doing with her? This is a Bible study class, Joseph. Oh, yeah? Um, I like the Bible. A bunch. Look, come on in. I thought this was a private Bible tutorial. There's enough God to go around.
Need another student? <gasps> Uncle Hank, you're joining the class? What are you doing here? Bibling up, dude. Joseph, go home. Nah, uh hold on. This is my Bible study class, and all of God's creatures are welcome. Even Joseph. Oh, Bobby, you are a delight. Pearl, we should fix him up with your niece. Uh, how old is she? 37. Okay, the thing about camels going through the eye of a needle, it's not good for the camels. So you can understand why it's not good to be rich. Totally. I'm as good as broke. I'm losing everything in the divorce. Hey, is this a Bible study in the pool class? Principal Moss? Bradley? Oh, Ruth the Poop. <gasps> you got my flyer. We sure did, Teach. And that picture does not do you justice. Oh, dang, I forgot my Bible. I'll just kind of look off yours here, Miss Luann. Okay, but next time you'd better remember. Remembering this is next to holiness. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on here. Well, we don't want to distract the teacher. Principal Moss, you can look on with me. <sighs> okay, then. Now, Luann, weren't you and Buck discussing the importance of the commandments and why you shouldn't covet things and such? Yeah, as a matter of fact, Luann. Hey, can I get in on this? Well, who the heck are you? Activio, dude. Die. We're trying to talk about the Bible here. Oh, sure you see. I'm way into it. Hey, look what I got. Jesus. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Hey, that's Rob Zombie. Shut up, kid. He got my Bible wet. Okay, Joseph, Octavio, no more fellowship hugs. Not until you show me you're here to learn the Bible, not get it wet. Earl, I talked to my doctor about you yesterday, and he agrees with me. You've got to cut down on the salt. He's coming in. Just that natural. Pass me the scones. Oh, yeah, I thought I saw someone I know. Mind if I take a look around? Sorry, sir. We have a dress code, ties for men, no tube tops for the ladies. Uh huh. Uh huh. So Paul was named Saul until he saw Jesus on the road to Damascus and changed his ways. That's right. Fellowship hug. <laughs> oh, boy. So when the Bible says he is without sin, should cast the first stone, what it's saying is... It's saying... What it's saying is, is we should look at our own sins try to be better people. It, yes, but if you... Sure, but you can't be a better person just by acting all righteous and stuff. It says right here in the book of Acts that... Wait, uh... The red letters are the Jesus words, right? Uh, Luann, if Buck could just... I've got a testimony. Now, you all may have read the story of the prodigal son, but fellow Christians, I have lived it. I have strayed far and long from the path of the righteous. I have sinned. I have lied. I have fornicated on stolen antique furniture. But I will tell you this. The good Lord sets the most beautiful table for the son who's eaten from the most dumpsters. You know, I have to admit, Buck is a changed man. Luann must be one heck of a Bible teacher. Yep, I guess she really got through to him. And all that time in the water's been good for his phlebitis. You sorry to interrupt, but I had something very important to tell you two. I'm an old-fashioned man, and as Luann's nearest unincarcerated kin, I wanted you to be the first to know. I'm going to ask Luann to marry me. <sighs> wow. Buck and Lou Ann. Wow. Well, I, I guess it was inevitable. I, well, women from broken homes always well, look for a father figure. Uh, I guess technically Buck is more of a grandfather figure, but I, I guess that might even be healthier. Well, there. I've made it palatable for myself. And Luann's been a pretty good influence on Buck. Did you see him? He was clean-cut, polite, he wasn't even sweating vodka. And when Buck's in good shape, so is Strickland propane. Ike, do you realize, if they marry, Buck will be our nephew? Huh. You know, Buck will probably lose his house in the divorce and move in with Luann. He and I could drive to work together. 
Luann, you've changed this ornery old jackass into a noble pack mule. But this mule don't want to walk life's treacherous mountain path alone. Luann Platter, will you have me as your husband? Huh? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> of course not. Yeah, but... Mr. Strickland, that's so crazy. You're very nice, but you're totally old. I like young guys who love Jesus, but have fitness and hair. Am I, no, no. You see, I, I, I got everything. She spurned me. I've been spurned. She what? She toyed with my affections. She was only doing it to get me to the Lord. How sick is that? Sir, wait. Luann, what happened? Buck just wanted to marry me, and I said no. Uh, well, he looked pretty upset, and when Buck's upset, he dives straight into his addictions. Oh, that's okay. He's totally addicted to Jesus now. Earl Grey, come on, give me a tough one. <gasps> Bobby Hill, you just ate your last thingy. Muffin? Pastry? What? Whatever! Move it! Congratulations, Mr. Feibel. I'll be out there tomorrow to personally hook up your new tanks. Well, what are you all looking at? You heathens? No, sir. Not on the premises and certainly not during business hours. Yeah, fine, then. Hank, let you and me go bet on the ponies. I just get some cash from the safe. Don't bother, sir. I changed the combination. Yeah, but it's always been my birthday. Well, now it's my birthday. You've been here 20 years. I, I, I know your birthday. I know it. It's uh, sep, sep over, September. It's 22, 20, 29. Uh, uh. <sighs> Hank, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. Don't we have a boy who comes and does this? Yeah, but the better these tanks are polished, the more sunlight they reflect, the cooler they stay, and the less propane escapes through that through valve. That valve? Yeah, I taught you that. You know, Buck, maybe Luann and her Bible class in the pool was his way of getting your attention, so you could see what's really important. Yeah. Propane's been good to me. Well, Lady Propane's been good to all of us, sir. <laughs> Lady Propane. That's a perfect swirl, sir. You know, maybe I could get rid of all my old addictions and get myself hooked solely on propane. And maybe just one other thing, you know, keep things spicy. Boy, these 5,000 gallon heifers look pretty at sunset, don't they? They sure do, sir. Oh, and those are 1,000 gallon tanks. And it's sunrise.
start, Mom. Hey, are you subbing today? Bobby, you know I am. You left me that message that they want me to sub for Italian. Uh, new. No. I wanted an Italian sub for lunch. Well, I'm all dressed up. I, I guess I could just shelve books at the library till they throw me out. <sighs> Dang it. Says here because of high produce prices, schools are yanking vegetables from their menu. Man, first they get rid of the organic garden and now this. What is it with this school and vegetables? Organic garden? What organic garden? The coaches try to keep it under wraps. You see, the kids who want to get out of gym class can work in the garden instead. I just wish I'd found out about it sooner. Then I wouldn't have to take the presidential fitness test. You'd rather work in an organic garden than participate in the presidential fitness test? Where's your patriotism, boy? I hate doing the flexed arm hang in front of everyone. They call me T-Rex because my arms can't support my weight. Bobby, the flexed arm hang... I know, I know. Could mean the difference between life and death. Doesn't matter anyway. Mr. Tomich is retiring and the garden is closing. End of story. So, as you can see and smell, I am a very gifted gardener. Sorry, Peggy, but we're not looking to replace Mr. Tomich. See, nobody really needs an organic garden. The football team, on the other hand, could use more storage space for their tackling sleds and old broken helmets. Nice punt. I tell you, this team's got something. Not like last year. Runs almost got me fired. What if the garden was working for the football team? Football, I'm listening. My husband read in the paper this morning about the veggie shortage. This team needs their vitamins. How do you expect them to make it to state without iceberg on their hamburgers? If you put me in charge, I will provide the team with the freshest vegetables in Heimlich County. I'll tell you what, Peggy, I'll give you a shot. You do okay, we'll talk permanent. And make sure you grow kale. That new quarterback we got loves kale. Hey, Dad, want to see me? No. But you don't know what I... No. Say hello to Tom Landry Middle School's newest organic gardening teacher. You saved the garden? Way to go, Mom! Mm-hmm. And now it will be supplying fresh vegetables to the football team. Organic garden? That's what hippies eat. When was the last time you saw a hippie that could take on an offensive tackle? Oh, who cares? Hank, organic gardening is terribly inefficient. It's a full-time job. It could be my full-time job. Good morning, class. I am your new gardening teacher, Mrs. Hill. So, this is all of you? Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, this looks ripe. Let's get to work. Work? Mom, you're embarrassing me. Mr. Tomich did everything himself. Sometimes we pick stuff. Mostly we just sat around and whatever. Well, there will be no whatevering in Mrs. Hill's garden. Ugh. Mm. So that's why people eat fruit. One, two, three, twelve. Boy, look at those jumping jacks. This is the year, I tell you what. Hey, Mom, why are we bringing all of this up to the field? So the cafeteria cooks can't steal our glory. Coming through. Make room for tomatoes so juicy you'll want to eat them with a lifeguard. Organic goodness. Straight from Mother Nature's womb. Uh, hey, look over there. Who's got a stopwatch? Let's check out the hang time on that punter. Hey, Hank, that's some fine-looking produce your boys got there. Yeah, maybe it'll give them enough juice to get off their butts and hustle! Huh, I guess the stuff does look pretty good. Looks a lot better than that goddamn special teams! Can't get the punch to save their lives! Good work, kid. You know, I gotta admit, Peggy, this stuff looks so good, I might have to become a vegetarian. <laughs> Not really. Look sharp, Bobby, it's the coach. That's a heck of a good-looking berry. Keep up the good work, son. Keep it moving, ladies! Keep up the good work, son. Yep, that's what the coach said to Bobby. And then when Bobby set out those organic onions, it was like he caught a 32-yard pass. What exactly are you trying to do, Hank? Turn our school into some sort of bohemian Montessori love fest? No, it's not like that. It's not like the organic gardening they did at Jonestown. It's more like farming. 
And you should have seen the size of the crops. I tell you, for a bunch of gym dodgers, these kids did a pretty decent job. Well, I guess I'm gonna head on in and watch some of the Home and Garden Network. It's compost week. Bobby and I are thinking of making a batch for the team. Dang it, now I've got compost fever. Me too. Maybe we could pitch in. Great idea. Now we need to find some leftover food, lawn clippings, dead leaves, and coffee grounds that have been left to rot for a long, long time. Just for the record, there is a garbage can in there somewhere. You know what would make this baby sing? Bat guano. Nature's miracle grow. Where do you buy bat guano? Sears? Yes, but it lacks the potency of straight out of the bat feces. Nope, we have to go right to the source. Mono iguano. Gold bar summer squash. Hmm. all these bugs. <gasps> Mrs. Hill, Spencer told me to tell you there's some weird fungus on the turnips, and I saw some snails near the lettuce. I already stepped on one. It was pretty cool. Oh, God. We have to feed these to the football team today. Why did I promise them a field of greens? Die! 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 Hey, everybody. The cavalry's here. Bobby, show the coach what kind of ammo you've got for our troops today. Oh, you know, just more of the same. What the hell happened to this carrot, son? I wouldn't feed it to sixth grade JV. Uh, this is terrible. Got anything else for the team to eat? An old hubcap? A wadded up newspaper? Peggy, I gotta tell you, my job be a lot easier if you weren't feeding worms to the football team. I gotta call this garden thing off. No, you can't do that. Oh man, I was practically on the football team. Now, hold on, Carl. Can I remind you of the time the school board wanted to fire a certain principal for growing a ponytail? Oh, I guess a long time ago. And a lot of us said, yeah, he looks like a jackass, but he deserves another chance. And that's all we're asking for. You got two weeks. Hey, coach. I don't feel so... Oh. One week. Don't worry, Peggy, we'll turn that garden around. I have never seen a problem teamwork couldn't fix. Aphids, worms, ugh. Why does every book about organic gardens have naked people in it? Well, this one has three chapters on Nixon and nothing about bugs. So when they say Mother Earth, they mean dirt, right? I I'm not sure, but wait, listen to this. Snails are attracted to the smell of beer. They will follow the scent, fall into the beer, and drown. Just like Judy Garland. Okay, here we are. What a uh, great-looking group of kids this is. This isn't all of them, is it? Uh, so how many of you have ever tried out for a team? And how many of you have ever been picked for a team? Uh, okay then. Well, I'm forming a team. The Garden Team. And you're all my first-round draft picks. All right, I'm playing for my dad. With your permission, I'd like to lead us in a cheer. Give me a Permission denied. Now, if we're going to be a team, we got to play together and give it all we got. So let's get in there and show these bugs we mean business. Yeah! Last call for beer, you little garden munchers. You don't have to go home, but you cannot stay here. Now, supposedly these milk cartons will help protect the base of the plants from crawling bugs, which are all beautiful in their own way. Queen Amidala, I will save you from the dark side. <sighs> if there were more than one garden team, we'd be in last place. Quit screwing around, guys. Now forget about Queen Amidala and the dark side. Who's saving these cucumbers from aphids? Boy, it's true what they say about the Denton flea market. You really can get anything there. So how much guano have you collected so far? None, but I've been feeding it bugs and prunes and massaging its colon for the past two days, so the floodgates are about to open. Build an ark, boys. We're gonna need more bats. 
Andrew, how many times do I have to tell you the weed puller is for pulling weeds? Oh, <laughs> a good job. <sighs> Dang it, Rain, I don't think your extract of hippie is going to help our garden. Actually, these are ashes from our wood stove at home. They discourage slugs and cutworms. Rain, you have just earned yourself a high five. Come on, don't leave me hanging. Hike, why isn't this working? Damn it, these bugs are eating my career. Peggy, I had my doubts about this whole organic thing too, but if the old gardening teacher pulled it off, then so can we. Look at these kids, they're actually working as a team. Slow down, Tommy, save some water for the plants. Mr. Tomich, I do not know how you did it. I tried every organic trick in the book. Soapy water, pepper spray, tobacco, cotton balls, pecan shells, ladybugs, and I got Jack. Eh, uh, how about methyl isothiocyanate? That wasn't in my organic gardening book. What is it? Very powerful pesticide. Just be sure not to get any on your hands. But, but the whole point is to teach kids about organic gardening. That's why you don't tell anybody. Oh, my God, you grew a garden of lies. Yes, and tomatoes the size of your cranium. Look, if you want to keep your garden and your job, you got to use pesticides. What do you think is keeping termites from eating this deck? Love? If Gallagher smashed it, it would reach all the way to the back of the room. You see, Peggy? You didn't have faith, but look at this place. <sighs> is there anything beer can't do? Mm, uh -huh. You're right. I know this stuff is for the football team, but it just looks so good, I'm going to have to try a sample. <gasps> hey, no, no. It's for the football team. And don't touch your eyes. According to the nice lady at the Flying Mammal Society, this bridge is home to more than 30,000 bats. Even if half of them are constipated, it's still a gold mine. Oh, man, it got old down pee on old you, man. Yes. Oh, God, it's awful. <laughs> Floor is slippery. That's a good sign. Boomhauer, get ready. I think I hear something. Yes. Picking up. Uh-oh. Oh, God, we've awakened a sleeping, pooping giant. Listen up, team. I just wanted to tell you all how proud I am. You've overcome the elements, the bugs, and God knows your own limitations. I got heat stroke. Look at this. I thought it was a tumor, but Mom said it was a callus. And since you guys are working like a team, I figured it's about time you look like one. Wow. Yep, Team Jerseys. Bobby, you keep up the good work, and I might have to sew a C on that jersey for Captain. Team, early bird kills the worm. <laughs> Peggy? <laughs> Peggy, what are you doing? Well, I, I was just vacuuming. That's a skull and crossbones sticker. It says warning poison. All right. I've been spraying pesticides. But Peggy, this is an organic garden. Using chemicals is the only thing you're not allowed to do. Oh, come on, Hank. How else do you think it was able to grow so well? You mean it wasn't us? It was a team? <sighs> and I already thanked God for a bountiful harvest. He must think I'm an idiot. Well, I had no choice. You can't get anything good without chemicals. Well, chemicals are what keep my hair so high and brown. Hank! Hank! 
screw helping the football team. If they want guano, they can crawl through hell getting it like we did. I had to burn my favorite Levi's in a hat that was perfectly molded to my head. Step right up, man. Get a get little, little guano just like them dang, dang old Egyptians, man. Gonna change your life, man. Gonna you know, just guaranteed to be fresh, too, man. You, sir, why are you afraid to take the guano challenge? Are you afraid it might rock your world? Coward! So Principal Moss pulled the plug on the garden. <sighs> The football team is moving their blocking sleds over there next week. Good. I'm on a goddamn mailing list for an organic food store now. <sighs> to think I shopped at a place called Passages. I guess the garden team has one more game left, huh, Dad? Harvesting the last crop. There never was any garden team. This was just your mother, the cheater, spraying her cheater juice all over the place. No, it wasn't. We worked hard on that garden. Who knows what we really did? It's like we all got caught using steroids. The only honorable thing left to do is forfeit and get off the field. What are you doing, Bobby? The garden team's dead. We should just set fire to the whole thing and watch it burn. We planted this garden and we worked hard to make it grow. Now there's one more harvest left and the snails are gonna have to go through me to get it. Hey! He's open! He's open! He... God dang it! Oh, look who it is. Hippie Hill. Hey, Granola, what's your boy doing in the garden over there? <sighs> dang it, Bobby. All right, I'll go make sure they're gone before the football team brings over their blocking sleds. Keep it up, team! It's the fifth quarter and time's running out. I know you're tired and sore, but if we don't bring these vegetables in, no one will. So keep picking till you can't pick any more, and then pick one more. Try plant this. It's raining pay. They're coming. They always come. Oh, oh, oh. Eat this. Oh. Something's in your way. Run it over. Get out of the way, garden dorks. Why, Dad? Why? I don't think so. These kids have worked hard, and this is what's gonna happen. They're gonna harvest their vegetables, you guys are gonna eat them, and then you're gonna say thank you. Move them, Hank. These cupcakes don't belong on the football field. You guys know I can play running back, but I can block, too. As I recall, Rick, you were a tennis player, right? All right, come on! Let's get back to practice. We have been working on this garden for a week, and I've tried to resist, but... Dad, give me a wheelbarrow ride! Okay, quick, get in. Can I help? I've gone straight, I swear. I'm done with chemicals. I didn't even use any shampoo, or soap, or deodorant this morning. Smell me! You can help step on beetles, but I gotta warn you, the ones that survived the poisons are really tough. Anything beer can't do?
green. He thinks better of it and packs away two steps and three steps. Wake up, girl. You don't want to miss all the excitement. Wesley tongue is now three inches from the putting surface. Electrify. Heart pounding. That grass was topped a few days ago, but it's still a bit thick. A terrible challenge. Hank, help me. Help, Hank. I'm just hearing things, right, girl? This is an absolutely crucial chip. Please, Hank. Help, Bill. Help. <sighs> help. <sighs> Not again. Help me, Hank. I'm trapped. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Uh, I was looking for change under there, and I got stuck. I'm ordering a pizza. Hungry? No, and don't bring it to my house. A gushing geyser of golf greatness. Wouldn't you agree, Hank? I forgot. You missed it. All told, a treasury of golden golf memories, but only for those who actually saw this storied golf. You officially owe me one memorable sports moment. Dang it, lately my scalp's been itching like crazy. You too? I thought my spider sense was tingling to warn me of danger. Unless we both have spider sense. Finally, we can talk about something besides who ruined whose golf watching day. My scalp is itchy too. It's lice, you know. What? Uh, no, man. There's a lady in town who does lice treatment for school kids. She's so pretty. So I stuck my arms into a big pile of hair. We cut off some new recruits. And those little critters, they just hopped right aboard me. And if any of you guys know a better way to meet the lice lady, I'd like to hear it. You gave us all lice, you disgusting he freak. Uh, hi, Hank. <laughs> Boomhauer, your bathroom is gorgeous. Can I bring Nancy by tonight after dinner? Okay, everybody. Heads in the tub. Now, according to the label, all the lice should be dead and her hair should be bouncy and manageable. So, how's everybody feel? Uh, man, the uh, dang old bunker uh, in, man. It took me to go clean out now, man. I don't... Uh, God dang no way into this stuff, man. Uh, die! 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 Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah! <laughs> Pull it together, Dale. I don't want to have to put the plastic cone around your neck. <laughs> okay, lice are nothing to be ashamed of. If it's nothing, why are you still wearing your shower cap? Am I? No. <gasps> why, so I am. That is so funny. I, well, I'll just take it off when I go outside where it'll be easier to take off. That <sighs> god dang bill. Ever since Lenore left him, I've done nothing but cut him slack. He sleeps on my car. He's always stealing Lady Bird's squeaky toys. Remember when he kept a chamber pot by his bed? Ah. <sighs> he keeps burying his porno in our backyard, and he... Well, I can't put up with it forever. It ends today. Yep. Yep. Yep! <sighs> well, the lice lady's booked up for weeks. Big epidemic at the Cub Scout Jamboree. She says the only thing we can do is shave our heads. Ding, better idea. As an exterminator, I will take steps to spare us the shame of hairlessness. A mixture of malathion and lindane. Fairly harmless, according to the government, which has been squirting it at you for most of your life. Dang it, Dale, I don't like the whole head shaving thing either, but... Yep! Get lost, Bill! Observe. <laughs> Simple enough. Huh. And tingling. Hmm. And burning. Itching, itching, burning. And blindness. Intense burning. Hank, get your hose. No! Hank! <laughs> no one to play lawn games, too. But nobody wants Bill's head on their lawn. Oh, no. Bill has lies. He's no good. Blibbity, blibbity, blue. <laughs> I suck. Huh. You usually get a case. Oh, that's back when I had friends to share beer with. Can I drink here? Nope. <laughs> oh, 
Mm -hmm. Just you and me, mailbox. There you go, buddy. Uh, sir, you can't do that. Oops. <laughs> I'm sorry, Buzz. <laughs> Buddy. All right, sir. Time to come downtown. I got a 149 on a 344. Did you catch a Northside burglar? No, he's a drunk. Is a 149 a burglary, Doug? You said 149? I thought you said I got the burglar. No, he said 149. Sorry, I'm a little drunk. <laughs> I have always wanted to use one of these. Bobby, don't you have something better to do than watch this? Oh, right. Like I'm supposed to go do my homework when my dad is getting his head shaved? Let's get this done with. It'll be one less thing to remind me of Bill. Hank! Thank God you're home. Well, where the hell else would I be? I'm sitting here getting my head shaved, thanks to you. I'm in jail. I fed a mailbox, I only get one phone call, and I called you. My bestest, oldest friend in the world. You have to come down here. Ah, uh, no. Yeah, but... Hank! Nancy shaved me. She did my armpits, too. I feel so clean. Hank! Boomhauer and me are shaved. Are you shaved yet, Hank? Oh, Hank, you are going to look awfully studly when I'm through. <sighs> hmm? What? It... Hank, why have you never told me you have a tattoo? What? That's impossible. I don't have a... I am looking right at it. Who is she, huh? Your first love, some roadhouse tramp? Bill? <laughs> God dang it. How could this be here? Get off me. Hank, it's a tattoo. You cannot rub it off with a washcloth. God dang it. How does a man lose track of the back of his own head? Oh, a tattoo? I've been lying every time I donated blood. <laughs> That's the matter, buddy. I'm the matter. I screw everything up. All my friends are mad at me because I gave them lice. You got lice? I also spit when I talk, and I fart when I spit. That's what makes the world interesting. Yeah. Hank, so you're the Northside burglar. Wait here a minute. Nancy, will you bring me a gun, please? Knock it off, Dale. I need to ask you something serious. Now, can you remember any reason why any of us might have ever gotten a tattoo? What kind of tattoo? Like a barcode? Because that would point to the Rand Corporation. <sighs> Good night, Dale. Mr. Hill, I have to tell you, tattoo removal is very painful and time-consuming. Are you sure you can't work things out with this bill? I'm sure. Oh, come on. What did he do? Forget your anniversary? Look at another guy with a little more hair? Bill is not my... <laughs> Anything. I don't even know how it got there. I just want it off my head now. Sure, your fingers turn blue from the barbicide, but that's just part of the job. You have a job? Sure. Got to pay the mortgage somehow. You got a house? Well, yeah. I got it in a divorce. You were married? Oh. <gasps> Guess we got a nickname for you. Hollywood. Well, if anyone can explain your tattoo, it'll be Boomhauer. He figured out it was Dale who was stealing your paper, remember? Hey, man. No, Hank, Peggy. <laughs> oh, man, you did. <laughs> man, little old little skin art, did you? Man, old old Hank. Man, man, old old Hank. Man, old wild man, man. All right, Boomhauer, spill it. Tell you what, why don't you go in there and relax and then sit back, sit back down and I'm going to tell you a little story, man, about a long time ago in a dang old Ireland far, far away, man. Yeah, you know, they talk about that old simpler time, you know, about that old crazy kid, you no know, bell bottoms, you know, that dang old disco sucks, you know, no, like a dang old back in the day, man. Oh, Bill, I can't I believe you. Bill joined up. Every time I exercise my freedoms, I'll think of him protecting them. <laughs> I'll wait for you. Boy, that's the third one today. And none of them is going to miss him more than me. <laughs> or me. Or dang old, you know, dang. Look at us all mopey. This isn't any kind of send-off for a soon-to-be war hero. Dallas, can 
we see where Lee Harvey Oswald was framed? Well, I just hope you fellas don't go and have too much fun while I'm gone. We won't. This is the last night of fun we'll have till you get back. Now, I want to be the first one to buy the army man a drink. The chainsaw. Huh. Probably a hangout for the lumber industry. Look out, enemies of America. Here comes our friend, Private First Class, Bill Dotree. Yeah, man, no. Yay. Bill. No, man. Play the gambler. Come on, play the gambler. You've got to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Bill, 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 Bill. Every time I go to the hardware store and the guy says, okay, here's your bill, I'm going to say, no, it's not. This is my bill. Hey, jackass, how'd you like to lose that finger? Whoa, whoa, there. You watch your language around G.I. Bill. Take it easy, friend. Aren't we all just here to rock? Boomhauer, get Hank out of here. So Bill saved my butt, and I never even thanked him. Oh, yes, you did, man. And I go, Bill knows when to fold them. He knows when to hold them. Boomhauer, stick with Hank. It's going to be a while with Dale. I had a big dinner. I tried to join up, too, but they didn't take me. Nerithra. Bill. Huh? Tattoo. Hey, man, dang, dang, no, man. Big, big letters here to here. B I L L Bill. Okay. Oh. Mm. Hey, man, don't eat them dang old passed out cold, man. Let's just let, let, let it go, man. I accepted his money. He's getting his ink. Oh, okay, man, but let's not 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 dump across the dang old chest, man. If I find out some place in the dang old sun don't shine, man. You know, I've been talking about it like I thought you'd never know, man. A dang old lice and just flew in that dang old curveball, man. It's like a goddamn old Sandy Koufax, man. <sighs> yeah, I guess I forgot all about the bill that Bill used to be. I ought to kick my own ass. You know, the real surprise here is that those poor lice could ever have survived off your cold, cold blood. <laughs> Dr. Milford, be straight with me. What have I got? It's a heart murmur. Tune in tomorrow. Oh, no. Oh, what happens? A heart oh. murmur? No, yeah, come on, fellas. You got to be patient now. Man, jail was a lot less fun before you got here. William Dotree, top of your court appearance. William Dotree, $50 fine. Don't do it again. You're free to go. Pay on your way out. Excuse me, Your Honor? What if I don't pay the fine? If you can't pay, you spend two days in jail. I'm not paying! What? Whatever. Two days in jail. Thank you! Bill, what the heck are you doing? What do you want? Did you come to mock me? No, Bill, I came to help. Well, you're a little late. I'm hanging up on you like you did to me. I might stay here longer than two days. I'll commit another crime. Hell, I'll tell them I'm the North Side burglar. <laughs> They'll lock me up and throw away the key. They'll show you. Come on, Bill, you're being crazy. Bailiff, escort me home, please. Hey, I got an idea. You tell the guys back in the cell I got electrocuted. Then I'll jump out and surprise them. Bill, Bill, no, wait, Bill. Officer, I demand to see Bill Dotrieve immediately. If necessary, I'll be happy to fill out the proper paperwork. Mr. Dotrieve is refusing to see visitors. He was quite specific. I am not leaving this station until I get to see my friend. Uh, sir, we really don't do threats around here. Bill! Bill, I need to talk to you! Go away! Yeah! Go away! Who are you? Who are you? Now get lost! We're busy! There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a leg on the frog in the bump of the log in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a leg on the frog on the bump in the log in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a leg yeah. on the frog in the bump. The fat one keeps saying he might be ready to cop to those B and E's. Hey, you want your pizza? There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a 
Work on him until you get a confession. <sighs> you know, the fat bald guy in the t-shirt wants to confess to all those burglaries on the north side. Really? So Hollywood Dotry wants to start doing some hard time. <laughs> Peggy, don't save dinner for me tonight. I'll explain everything later. But right now, I'm afraid I have to break the law. I believe I'm in violation of the law. Go ahead and arrest me. Uh, sir, that's not officially a law. Uh, it's just store policy, but I don't enforce it. I'm not even wearing shoes back here. You scratched the bumper sticker from my daughter's school, jackass. Hey, brother. Yeah, the guards let me have a tape recorder in here. You want to hear what your companion would sound like just for fun? Yeah, I appreciate that. I just don't want it to sound too rehearsed. Bill, Bill. Hey, Bill. Hank, what are you doing here? I came to help you. Don't confess. Well, why should some criminal get to go to jail and make me go back to my lousy life without any friends? I'm your friend, Bill. Prove it. Prove it? I've been your friend for 25 years. Who talked you out of buying the houseboat? Who kept you from killing yourself after Lenore left you? Who listens to you for hours after you've had a nightmare? And I'm happy to do it because we're friends. Heck, I even got myself arrested just so I could talk to you. Huh. Yeah, and it turns out I also had your name tattooed on the back of my head. Really? Let me see it. Uh, actually, I just kind of had it removed. Very painful process. Not because it wasn't a great tattoo, but- God, I want to confess! Oh, dang. Uh, sir, do you think I could have a moment of your time? Oh, gosh, that smarts. If you want, I could frame it in barbed wire. Or snakes. Bill, hey, Bill. Now what? You, uh, you still got that mirror? Well, you look at that. I especially like the smiley face over the eye. Wow. That must have been incredibly painful. Yep. Yep. Looks like you're out early on good behavior. If good behavior is a factor here, I cleaned the toilets and made the beds. Sit down, Baldy. Your court date's not till noon. Well, fellas. Looks like this is it. Oh, gee. I gee promised girl. myself I wasn't going to cry, but look at me bye now. Bye-bye. Heck, if you want, I can get myself locked up again to keep you company till noon. No, no. You've paid your debt to society, Bill. Now I'll pay mine. Okay, then. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dotrieve, uh, you're free to go. Uh, that's okay. I'm waiting for a friend. See?